Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. Welcome to my first extensive playthrough. We're starting off with a Nintendo 64 classic, Lilat Wars. Better known as Star Fox 64, this game hit the shelves for the first time 16 years ago, which is kind of scary to think about. Ever since, force feedback has become a standard feature in all console controllers. Well, okay, that needed a separate rumble pack as well. Shh, the six axis never actually happened. The origins of the series are, of course, on the SNES with the original Star Fox. Though this game was known in Europe as Star Wing due to trademark issues with an earlier game of the same name. While the creators of that earlier Star Fox game did not file for a trademark in the US, they actually did in Europe, and so Nintendo simply renamed the PAL releases until the problem was finally resolved and Star Fox Adventures was able to be released with its original title, as have all Nintendo Star Fox games since. Given a certain reputation I have gained in regards to flying games, you might be surprised to learn that I never actually owned or even played Star Fox back on the SNES though I did watch my next door neighbour play it a few times on his. I suppose it just didn't really appeal to me at the time. This was actually a point in my life where I hadn't even seen any of the original Star Wars trilogy. The new trilogy didn't even exist. Any kind of sci-fi just wasn't really on my radar. As a result, Star Fox 64 was the first game in the series that I actually played. Just like with Super Mario 64, it was at a demo booth in the Metro Center's HMV store. I played through the second level, which is the asteroid field, seeing as the person playing before me didn't see a Falco back on Corneria. <gasps> Spoilers! I pretty much resolved to buy the game that weekend, and indeed I did, complete with official rumble pack that all came in a great big box that would make PC games of the time jealous. Although before long I swapped the real deal rumble pack with the third party shockwave pack, which included a built in 1MB memory card and did not actually require batteries. It even had a sound sensor that would listen for abrupt sound effects in the games, rumbling in response. This was an effort to try and add the feature to games which didn't actually have proper rumble pack support. It didn't work particularly well, but at the same time it was a nice little idea. Star Fox 64 would dominate my N64 from October until Christmas, which was when GoldenEye and Diddy Kong Racing hit the shelves. But I would still go back to it from time to time for many years to come. That's the game, but what about the series beyond the N64 incarnation? Well, I would say that Star Fox is possibly the closest thing Nintendo have to Sonic the Hedgehog. Not in terms of the use of anthropomorphic animals which has seen both series being claimed by the world of furry, but by the general inconsistency of quality. The early games, Star Fox and Star Fox 64, first rate. But while Star Fox Adventures isn't really a bad game in and of itself, especially at the time it was released, it's hard to overlook that it was obviously never meant to be associated with the Star Fox universe. It was also basically just Rare's take on a 3D Zelda game, in much the way that Banjo-Kazooie was their take on a 3D Mario game. Unlike Banjo-Kazooie, however, Star Fox Adventures really didn't improve on anything that Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask had done on the N64, and this was with the power of the GameCube at its disposal. Nonetheless, it did seem to mark a downward trend, driving the series away from its actual roots, shooting things with the best Starfighter of all time. Then we get to Star Fox Assault, and oh boy. Now you would have thought that the combination of the team that made Ace Combat with the Star Fox franchise would be a match made in gaming heaven, but alas, for some reason that continues to defy logic to this day, they decided to build the bulk of the game around on-foot combat as a third-person shooter. Not modelled after Star Fox Adventures though, oh no no no, modelled more on the bonus feature in Star Fox 64's multiplayer mode that was obtained by getting all gold medals on every mission in expert mode. The game even had an optional control scheme that would mirror the Star Fox 64 version, including choices like using the shoulder button to run. The R-Wing sections, when present, were okay, but in my opinion lacked finesse and the outright fun of the N64. Something about them just didn't feel quite right. And, despite being largely built around it, the multiplayer just wasn't very good either. 
we might get to that game in more detail at a later date. Next up was Star Fox Command on the Nintendo DS. A definite step in the right direction after Assault, it was almost exclusively focused around the all range mode of Star Fox 64. There were many playable characters, perhaps too many in another allusion to Sonic, but there were at least many different story paths and a whole ton of different endings. Some story aspects were even a touch dark, at least for a Nintendo game. What really hurt it though, at least for me, was that you had to fly with the touch screen. This just never really clicked with me, although there is an action replay code which maps the controls onto the D-pad and buttons so much better. Still, it was generally a very repetitive game, essentially revolving around the same missions of destroying all enemies in a small arena within a time limit, then having to fly through a few rings to take out a mothership. Finally, we come to the most recent entry in the franchise, and the best in Star Fox 64. It's called Star Fox 64 3D. Yes, it's a remastered 3DS version of the N64 game, with enhanced graphics, new voice acting, a remix soundtrack, and the optional 3D effect. It might be portable, but at least it allows you to choose between using the analogue nub, if that's your preference, rather than forcing you to use the touchscreen or gyroscope. It's always a bit of an odd feeling when a remake becomes the best entry in a series for 16 years, although once again this is not entirely unlike Sonic, with Generations being the best entry in that series since Sonic and Knuckles back on the Mega Drive, simply by embracing those 16-bit classics. You know, actually, maybe the Sonic comparison's a bit too harsh. While Star Fox Assault was a low point for the series, it can hardly be compared to the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog game on the Xbox 360 and PS3. For a start, Star Fox Assault wasn't fundamentally broken to the point of almost being unplayable, nor was 90% of the game made up by loading screens. So here we are, a little more information on this actual playthrough. We'll be using the Project 64 emulator along with the US version of Star Fox 64. Why use an emulator? Well, let me explain. Firstly, I currently own three different versions of Star Fox 64. No use of the past tense there, I still have all of them in my possession to this exact moment of time. So why not be authentic and use the N64 itself with my original Lilith Wars cart? Because then I'd have to use these. Pardon me, but fuck off. These things are an abomination. This horrid cable alone has made every single one of your games look much worse than they actually were. Colour bleed through being the worst of the nasty little things this little bastard does that significantly lowers the image quality. Be gone! Okay then, so why don't I use my virtual console version on the Wii U via component cables? That's actually not a bad call, if I lived in an NTSA region. You see, Nintendo decided they would only release localised versions of games on the Virtual Console. And so, once again, Lilith Wars was the version released in PAL territories. However, unlike NTSA Virtual Console games which have the option to be played in 480p, PAL ones can only be played in 576i. Well, strictly speaking, they can be played in 576p on the Wii U, but only via HDMI. Since Component is my only solution for capturing quality console content, that would mean capturing an interlaced image, which is another drop in quality. Also, while Lila Wars was the first N64 game by Nintendo to be given a decent PAL conversion so that it was full screen, it still ran at a slower refresh rate, with gameplay itself being a certain percentage slower. So, why not Star Fox 64 3D? Because it's on the bloody 3DS! Even if I could capture video directly from it, which I can't, the resolution would still be pretty low, with a vertical resolution of only 240 pixels. So, emulated on the PC it is. This allows me to capture via fraps in extremely high quality, whilst also allowing the game to actually be rendered at 1080p rather than merely upscaled. There's also a fan-made replacement texture pack that enhances a few things, including the on-screen display. Although I have removed a few of those things, as let's just say a few of them are a little bit dodgy. 
such as the communication panels that pop up when characters talk. Ah, bloody hell! Look at it! Would you listen to this thing telling you to do a barrel roll? Ugh, gives me the creeps. Please, get rid of the psychopathic bunny. Whew. Still creeps us out. So, yes, anyway, the rest of the texture pack's actually pretty good. And I don't really mean to be insulting by going on about that picture of Peppy, but... No, I just I just cannot stand the uh, replacement <laughs> character profiles. So, all this, and running at the speed the game was intended to run at. 60 Hz. With my trusty Xbox 360 controller, it's currently the best way to play the game. And that is in no small part Nintendo's own fault. Come on Nintendo, please treat the PAL regions better. Every PAL game on the Virtual Console should have a progressive scan option. So then, that's it. Some of my thoughts on Star Fox 64 and the series as a whole. Now, onwards to the game itself. If you're moving on to the version of just the gameplay, then I bid you adieu. If you're moving on to the version with my real-time as I play commentary, good luck. You'll need it. And so will I.